Hey folks, welcome back to Advent of Code in F-Sharp. Uh, day 22 already, we're nearing the end here. Uh, this will be a live coding session, no summaries today. Because <laughs> uh, I have not taken a look at uh, today's problem. So let's take a look, let's take a quick look. Day 22, sand slabs. Enough sand has fallen, it can finally filter water for Snow Island. Well, almost. There's always an almost until we hit day 25. The sand has been falling as large compacted bricks of sand piling up to form an impressive stack here near the edge of Island Island. In order to make use of the sand to filter water, some of the bricks will need to be broken apart, nay, disintegrated back into freely flowing sand. Okay, the stack is tall enough that you'll have to be careful about choosing which bricks to disintegrate. If you disintegrate the wrong brick, large portions of the stack could topple, which sounds pretty dangerous. The else responsible for water filtering operations took a snapshot of the bricks while they were still falling, which is our input, which should let you work out with which bricks are safe to disintegrate. For example, 3D coordinates. Each line of text in the snapshot represents the position of a single brick at the time the snapshot was taken. Single brick, okay. The position is given as two coordinates, one for each end of the brick. Okay, so we have like these Tetris blocks, which are squarish. We have two coordinates, cool. Each brick is made up of a single straight line of cubes. Yeah, and the elves were even careful to choose a time for the snapshot that had all of the free falling bricks at integer positions above the ground. That makes things a bit easier, of course. So our snapshot is aligned to a 3D cube grid. A cube like 2 to 2 2 to 2 means that both ends of the brick are at the same coordinate. In other words, that the brick is a single cube. Mm, yeah, I understand that sentence. I don't like <laughs> identical coordinates being like one brick. Okay, uh, lines like whatever, 0, 1, 10, 1, 0, 10. Both represent bricks that are two cubes in volume, both oriented horizontally. Okay, yep. Yeah. Horizontally, what does that mean? Z is the height. X, Y is the plane. We could model it like that, yeah. Uh, this is a 10 cube brick, which is oriented vertically 10 high, yeah. The ground is at Z equals zero and is perfectly flat. The lowest Z value a brick can have is one, okay? So we so this block and this block are both resting on the ground and this one is floating somewhere above. Cool. Because the snapshot was taken while the bricks were still falling, some bricks will still be in the air. Cool. You'll need to start by figuring out where they will end up. Bricks are magically stabilized, so they never rotate, even in weird situations like where a long horizontal brick is only supported on one end. Tetris. This is Tetris. 3D Tetris. Two bricks cannot occupy the same position, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it rests upon the first brick we encounter. That makes sense. <laughs> and then we have some examples. Every brick is given a letter, cool. At the right time, of, at the time of the snapshot from the side, so the X axis goes left to right. These bricks are arranged like this. Okay, so we're building some kind of Yenga tower with, with Tetris blocks. And it's 3D, yeah, that makes sense. A is on the bottom. It's one by three long. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're always lines, right? They're not nothing is more than one wide. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. And some bricks support other bricks if they touch each other vertically, yeah, and safe to disintegrate. What that, does that mean? A brick can be disintegrated if, after removing it, no other bricks would fall further. Don't disintegrate, just determine what would happen. Okay, if there's something else supporting bricks, uh, that's okay. As well brick b supports some stuff but other bricks also support same stuff so that's safe to remove 
Okay, so we need to figure out where each brick lands. That's the first part. And then we need to figure out some kind of graph saying that this brick is supporting that brick. And then we try to remove nodes from the graph and we see whether or not uh, something loses support. So that would mean we have a graph, we remove nodes and edges, and then we check for every node in the graph whether or not it has incoming vertices. Something like that would work, I think. In the example, five bricks can be safely disintegrated. Cool. So we're going to do, for part one at least, we're going to do a two-step thing. First, we just simulate falling down until everything reached a steady state, and then we will do the disintegration thing. And I think I'm going to grab for something graph algorithmy, removing nodes and seeing. Yeah, I think I'm going to go that route. So let's grab the example and let's grab our input. That's the example. And the input, let me get rid of some windows. My input is somewhere below. There we go. Ooh, that can go in here. That's a lot of bricks. <laughs> 1,457. Whoa. Okay. Uh, so step one is modeling the falling down. Mm, what do we need for that? We need to parse our inputs and then we just need to loop over them. Lowest first would be probably... What's lowest first? The one with the lowest coordinate in the Z direction. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna make some assumptions here. I'm gonna draw some stuff out. Uh, so I have X horizontally y going uh, in the depth and z is the up down direction and probably correct to state that every brick is either a one by n one by n or one by n in the depth if i read the problem correctly so we have like three orientations for brick, but that does not really matter, I think. And now step one, we need to figure out uh, if a brick, oh, if a brick falls down, another brick falls down. Uh, we need to figure out like when is something being blocked by something below. That's actually pretty doable, I think. Uh, I am going to parse my blocks yeah i'm going to parse my blocks so let's declare some types uh i'm gonna create a coordinate type it's just a true tuple of three numbers tuple and then we have a brick which is just a list of two coordinates does it make sense to sort those coordinates Probably it does, <laughs> uh, but uh, don't matter. No, I'm gonna start with like just a tuple of two coordinates and we'll think about whether or not we want to sort those somehow, uh, but that's for future me. So we have our types. Now let's write a parser. So let's try to parse this thing. That's the line. And let's try to parse line. Uh, so we need to split on the tilde character. Yeah, that's P1, P2 in an array. Or, you know, yeah, I'm going to do it like this. Nice and uh, simple one liner. And then I'm going to split both of those on comma. And that is mapping to an integer. And that's an array. 0, 0, 004, yes. And let's plug those values into a tuple. So 
but that is uh, i'm gonna use the same trick here x1 y1 z1 and the same for points two uh, there we go so this should parse into numbers for x2024 yep now we can return our brick which is a tuple of coordinates I'm gonna help the compiler a bit here so yeah then we need two coordinates x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 That looks correct, so let's wrap that in a function. And we need to help the compiler here. Line is a string. And we return a brick. And let's get rid of these boilerplate crafty things. And let's encode this in a test. So test, parse, whatever I had here. This line, yeah, that should be what we had in our REPL just a second ago. So I'm going to reevaluate. That looks correct. So now we can parse our inputs, or example at least. Yes, we can. Let's run that on every line of the example. Make sure it works. And let's run it on the input as well. That seems to do something. Uh, I see biggish numbers. Let's take a look at uh, what our biggest numbers are. How big is our space? I see values ranging up to 300. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. We can do today, I think, in a single session. Or at least part one. Um, so we have our bricks. And now we, these bricks need to drop to the floor. Let's use example. Yeah, we are using the example, not our input. Cool. Uh, so we have some bricks here. A to G. We just parsed D. Uh, now I would like to sort these by lowest point. Because that... Hmm. Is that a good heuristic to sort on? Yeah, if they're all beams like no exotic shapes no tetris shapes just beams in these three directions i think we can just sort by z coordinate so that's a one-liner uh, so let's sort our bricks sort by yeah there's two points in there so uh yeah what actually do i want the lowest point if we don't sort those two points okay i'm gonna write a utility function i have my brick type here i'm gonna declare some functions on the, the brick type or for the brick type uh, and since this year i've been using like modules with the same name as types it's a nice little trick to have like functions close to the type and i can define a bottom which gives me the lowest C coordinate, bottom of a brick. And here we can destructure what I was doing uh, below. So it's Z1 and Z2. I'm just using some destructuring here to grab the data easily. And I'm going to return the minimum of those two values. Why is it complaining? Because I need more parentheses, probably, or I have misplaced my parentheses. There we go. So I can get the bottom of a brick. <laughs> Very impressive. So sort by brick dot bottom. Sorry. Sort by takes projection. Yeah, it should work. Oh, it takes. No, it takes just one. What is my brick bottom? It takes two bricks. That's not what I'm. Uh, huh? 
Oh, it should not return a break. That's the problem. Okay. So it should return an int value and my type hints are confusing it. So yeah, now it takes a brick. And I said the brick and now it's saying it's a tuple of coordinates. <laughs> I know it's a brick, okay. Uh, and it returns an integer, that's more correct. So now everything compiles. Mm -hmm. And we're sorted Z, 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 lowest element comes first. That looks somewhat correct. Okay, we're good to go. So now every brick just needs to drop down as far as it can, given whatever is below it already on the floor. So how low will this first brick fall? It's on the floor already. Is that the start example? That's not even falling. That's not even falling. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's G is floating. The last block is floating. Once all of the bricks fall downward, how many bricks actually fell downward? Oh, B and C also, C should also fall in the example. C, B is not, A or B are not, or B is not supporting C. So, okay, we have some falling action. <laughs> C should fall down and G should fall down, right? And maybe even E should fall as well. Because it's at the same height as D. So C, E and G should fall. We should have some fall action in the example. Cool. Uh, so what would our fall down algorithm look, right, look like? It just loops over these sorted bricks and pulls the first one as low as it can until it collides with something. Either the floor or another brick somewhere below it. So I think we just literally stated the main, our algorithm skeleton. So it's a let's write a drop function which takes bricks and let's pattern match on bricks. If we're done, we have we have our tower. Let's call it tower. So whatever we're building up is called a tower. And that's the end, uh, end result. And if we don't have any bricks anymore, we return tower. If we do have a brick. We do something with B, giving the tower. So we're gonna drop brick B on the tower. And that's the updated tower. And then we're gonna recursively drop the rest of the blocks on the updated tower. Something like this. So this is recursive and we need to define drop brick which makes the problem a bit smaller let's make that just have that return the tower for now so we wrote the skeleton of our algorithm we don't need no tests <laughs> we wrote the skeleton of our tower and now we can scope the problem down to only dropping a single brick given a tower what's the best uh, data structure for our tower knowing that our input will have 1,400. For part one, that's actually not too bad, and we can use whatever, just a list of bricks even. We could make it smarter, we could make it smarter. Do we need to make it smarter? What's the operations we need to do on the tower? For dropping bricks, at least. For disintegrating, I'm going to use some kind of graph. Is it easy to use a graph for dropping bricks? I don't think so. I'm, I'm not going to bother too much. I'm just going to use a list of bricks as my tower. Which contains the final resting place of every brick. So we uh, offset a brick by the Z coordinate for uh, until it blocks is blocked by something. And then that new uh, location of the brick, the new dimensions or the new points, push those into a list, the tower, 
and that will be the result. For part one, I think that's enough. Will it be like quadratic? But it's only 1,500 uh, bricks that we need to loop over. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's bad, but it's not too bad. So let's go for that. Um, so we need to find the uh, lowest location that brick can fall in this tower. So let's program by wishful thinking. So uh, we're going to try to find lowest. Hmm. Or do I want to calculate the offset? Now let's first calculate the, the lowest location. So given brick. Uh, I know the bottom of a brick. Do I need a bottom? Why, what did we need a bottom? Oh yeah, to sort it. Um, we can figure out the bottom of a brick, but that's not what we need. We need to find... We need to find... What do we need to find? We know like every XY coordinate of the brick. Or we need that at least. And then for every XY coordinate, we need to look down. So go down on the Z axis until we hit something. And the something can be ground. And the something can be another brick. And the highest of all those points with the maximum Z coordinate, that is where the brick will find its resting place. So I said a couple of things here. We need to generate all x y coordinates of a brick i'm gonna call that uh projecting the brick in the horizontal plane so yeah i'm gonna call a project function or define a project function on brick and that's uh just the x y coordinates but then it explodes them, so it generates pixels for every line on the uh, in the X Y plane. It's also not the most uh, uh, hmm, elegant way, probably. Probably you can do a lot of geometric magic, <laughs> but I'm just gonna do it uh, plain and simple. So we have our brick module, and I'm gonna project to the X Y axes. which just takes the xy components of a brick and generates a point for everything in there. So x1, y1, x2, y2, and it generates a coordinate. What does it generate actually? A 2D coordinate. No, a list of 2D coordinates. I'm gonna generate a new type or create a new type 2D coordinates. And that's what project returns and as a list. What's the problem? This is not a valid numeric literal. Sorry, can I not prefix with a 2? I did not know. I could not do that. So yeah, so this is my idea uh, and then generate points. And if it's only one pixel by one pixel, I also want a point. I don't want an empty list. So let's actually return the tower here. So my compiler does not complain and let's start playing around with this project idea. So what if I have a brick that is one one long, so one, two, whatever, by one, two, whatever. So this is a single pixel. So that should generate me just a one, two, if I project this. If I do brick.project b, I should get a one, two, it's a list containing only one, two. That's the idea at least. So, um, can I use a for comprehension? For x in x1, x2, for y in y2, 
yield x, y. Does that work? Hey, it actually works. Cool. Does that work uh, if my thing is not sorted? So if I say, let's take a, another example. I think uh, I have an, uh, an edge case here if I don't sort my brick or the location of my brick. So this works. Let's wrap it in a test. Uh, that's the output I expect. Yeah, that works. Uh, now let's project, uh, but put a big number first. So that should also generate an XY plane. But as you can see, it's generating the empty list. And that's because if you do a four comprehension with this range thing, does not work very well, so we need to sort x1 and x2. And probably we need to sort it a lot of <laughs> in a lot of these helper functions, but I'm just gonna do a quick hack. And that's sorting uh, x1 and x2. Or I could... Yeah, okay, that would work. And that would also work for uh, Y. Uh, that's not... Yeah, that's what I was supposed to be doing. So I'm using some dirty trick here. I'm aliasing. This X1 shadows that X1, so it kind of overrides the binding. <laughs> not a huge fan of that, uh, mostly. But just for a sort, why not? Uh, it appears to work. This is giving me false because the test is failing, but at least now it's giving me uh, three points. Three, two, one, two. It should go from one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Yeah, that looks correct. Uh, and we only can have beams, so we don't need to do anything special. I think this is our project function. So I'm going to drop my tests in my test runner. Everything works. So we have an XY plane. This is the list of all the XY coordinates of our brick. And now we just need to look in this XY plane. We need to look downwards in the tower. So we need to find the Z coordinate of everything in this XY plane. So let's write a tower. Uh, let's introduce a tower type because if we're going types let's go all the way <laughs> tower is just a brick list just for now and we have uh, some functions that work on a tower again and that's uh, the maximum z coordinates for uh, x y for a 2t location and that gives uh, the Z coordinates. That would work, I think. So if we do tower dot tower, not tour, <laughs> tower dot max Z in the X, Y's. Uh, that's a list and I'm writing my function for one coordinate. So let's map over the X, Y's and let's do tower max E, give it a tower. So this takes a tower and an XY. This should all compile. Hey, it all compiles. So yeah, we're taking uh, an XY plane and we're taking a look at what's the maximum Z location in this tower for this XY, for this entire list. And then we just find the maximum Z of that. And that's max and that's the Z offset oh no that's the z index of or the height of whatever is below us so that's the z below and now we can just say so brick is the updated brick and we add the brick to the tower and this is where we need to offset our brick 
So I'm taking big, big steps, giant leaps even. <laughs> uh, so this needs to do a brick dot offset or, or lower to Z below. And that should do something. So I'm gonna just write the function signature. So let below what were my, my arguments, the Z, or I'm gonna call it lower. Oh yeah, it is lower, sorry. It takes a Z index and a brick, and we're gonna fail with a to-do, because I'm taking way too big a step here. I'm working on, what am I working on? Uh, maxi, we had, do we have maxi? We don't have maxi, <laughs> that's what I'm working on. So first we're gonna do the maxi calculation, and then we're gonna do the lower the brick a couple of Z, which is pretty easy, but one thing at a time. So we're going to figure out the maximum Z in an XY plane or on an XY coordinate even. So we're going to find. Oof, that's that's not just quadratic. It's like. a Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit heavy on the computation if we model our tower as a list of bricks because it's not the points it's like a begin and end and we need to figure out like in this xy plane whatever brick is in here so it's not really straightforward actually interesting but we could uh, do it uh, that way we could say tower Uh, we could figure out for every brick in the tower, like, a, hey, give me your highest location. And if it doesn't have one, it's okay. Uh, so yeah, that will work. So then we can say brick dot max height at uh, the location at the XY. And that returns an option because uh, a, a given brick can have like nothing on that XY coordinate. And if there's nothing, we can do uh, option or if we have a list, so we have a list and we can map everything to its max C coordinate. And uh, if we don't have anything, so let's pattern match. Uh, let's better match on that. And if we have nothing, so we did not find anything, no brick in the tower with an XY, we default to one because, uh, oh no, what is below me is zero and I need to rest at one. So it's this. And otherwise, uh, let's sort this as well. Sort descending. And then we can just say, uh, height whatever it's the first height or we could say uh, give me the heights give me heights max and then we don't need to sort here so yeah that will also work uh, again little helper function i dreamt up that does not exist maximum height at an xy coordinate so let's write that one as well XY 2D coordinate and a brick. And that gives me an option. So now we have two helper functions we need to define. Uh, first one is maximum height at an XY in a brick. So I, again, we can use the trick of generating uh, all XYs. <laughs> Now oh, this is going to be an expensive operation. Yeah, but it's project. That's exactly what we need. So we're going to project uh, the brick. Project the brick. So we have a list of 2D coordinates. And that's every coordinate. Oh, we can't just project. We need a Z. We need a height. Mm 
Hmm. So actually we need to generate not uh, only the two dimensions, we need to generate in all dimensions actually. So it's going to be even worse. Yeah, it's very much not optimal. And very much not a, an optimal algorithm either, but uh, <laughs> it'll work, it'll work. So this is uh, this thing, let's call that this thing. We're going to destructure again on x1, y1, z1. Very much not the cleanest code I've written in my life, but it'll work. So for four, for z in z1, z2. Or I'm going to use the arrow. And now we have our uh, expansion of our brick into all its coordinates, all its parts. Thank God for this uh, compiler warning, or I would have introduced a bug I would never have found. <laughs> Uh, so these are all the coordinates and if any one of those is x y we take the maximum z so let's filter where uh, uh, it's a tuple of three dimensions and we take a look at x y so if uh, we have an x, y match, so if x equals x, so x, and y equals y, y, we have a match. So those we keep and we take uh, the z coordinate of this thing. It's very much not an optimal algorithm. I'm very sure of that. <laughs> we take the max. So this is the, uh, the maximum height. Uh, This, this sounds like a this sounds like a bad idea <laughs> this sounds like a very bad idea so I'm gonna do the quick hack again so match with if it's uh, an empty list we did not find anything if it's something we take the max value. So it's very similar to what I just wrote a second ago, which is not a good sign most of the time. This is a bug. I am using or introducing a lot of bugs here. And we need to wrap the maximum Z in a, an option, of course. So. No, still not happy. Yes, it is happy. So this is very expensive. I need to do this 1,500 times for the last one. And it could be a very big, big, big brick. Uh, are they big bricks? These don't look too big, actually. They're always like one, two pixels long. Ah, it might be okay. It might be okay. So this is the maximum height. For uh, on an XY coordinate for a single brick. So actually, uh, if my x is between these two values and my y is between these two values, then I just take the highest c1. That's actually correct, right? This is super overkill. <laughs> uh, this is super overkill, I think. If I if my x and y coordinates fall in the x1, x2 range. Then it's just the highest C. Does that work for all? So if I fall in here, it's the C, yes. If I fall in here, it's that C, yes. If I fall in there, it's that C. Yeah, I think that's correct. So this is overkill to the max. We just need this and we can say if, I think, I think we can say this at least. So if my X, is in the range of the sorted x1 and the sorted x2 so those if i am in between those and same for my y's so 
then I just give me the max z. And that's an option, otherwise nothing. So that's easier and not as computationally expensive. That's better. Does that look correct? That looks correct. Cool. Uh, I'm going to take one final little helper function. I'm going to implement that one. So that's lowering a brick by z. Sounds easy, <laughs> actually. So I'm going to grab this, the structure. Uh, so we can do it in a one-liner, which is giving or returning the exact same bricky brick we have, but we lower the z by z. <laughs> That's the idea, at least. So I think this is it. The, the, without seeing any code running, <laughs> I think this is it. So let's see uh, how far we got first time. So I'm going to grab my example, munging. There we go. We have our bricks, we sort them, and now we can run drop, drop, whoa, that's SQL, not F sharp. So drop empty tower are sorted bricks. It's doing something. <laughs> uh, so let tower equals, it's doing something. Does that look correct? Uh, let's take the example. And let's verify. So A, something should be at 1. It's length 2. Oh, there it is. No, that's length height, height 3. Where is height 1? It's this one. And it's length 2, 3. It's length 3. That makes sense. So that's A, I guess. And B and C should be at height 2. Oh, this notation is super confusing. This is something as height one, and there's something else at height one. Zero, zero, one. That does not sound correct. Zero, zero, one. What one is that? There is nothing. Oh, it could, should never be at zero, zero. Is it this one? Is it B? Zero, zero, one, two, oh, one. Yeah, it's B. My B has dropped to the ground. <laughs> Why is A not supporting B? A should be supporting B, right? So there's a bug in our there's a bug in our code. Oh no! But we found it already. It's when you try to drop B on A. So let's write a quick little test that uh, min uh, like mimics this. I'm just gonna inline it first, play around with it a bit, and then uh, we're gonna. Encode it as this. So we're gonna drop on this, which is A. So this is the initial tower that contains A. This is why I love functional programming. I can just like reproduce the state by copy pasting some stuff and then drop B on it. And B is what was it? 002202. So it's this one offset by one. So we're gonna drop this brick it's a single thing as well and it should bump to to two so this should not drop but it is dropping oh oh i i know already uh this is the z below and it's saying like okay your one is below and we subtract or subtract one from this from my, my z coordinates but i shouldn't i should subtract it by one less yeah yeah that makes sense so drop brick drop brick lower this minus one that's how far i should drop uh plus one <laughs> minus one minus one why am i seeing all kinds of squigglies okay so does this work Yeah, now my brick B is staying at height 2 instead of dropping next to or inside. That looks better. I'm going to encode that as a test. That was a useful one. This should be this. I'm not going to bother writing an abstract data type. If we need to rework our data structures, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. 
for now it's just super unreadable tests all the way. <laughs> Joke, I, I would not want to maintain this madness. But uh, for advent of code, it's good to go. So let's take a look at our revised algorithm here. If we drop our bricks now. Why does it format or why does it sort it this weird? Why is my two before my one? I'm going to sort them by bottom again. Just to, to visualize. Let's do that descending. Yeah, so that's my A brick. That's my B brick. B and C should be at the same height. Is that correct? Yeah, B and C are at the same height. Uh, what should also be true? D and E should be on the same height. So that's A, B, C. D and E are at height 3. And we have... Shouldn't there be a G? Should Something should have dropped, which is G. But it should not be at the same height as F. So I think it's correct if G is at height... Five, six. It's at six, seven. Crap. <laughs> yeah, that should not be right. Why is G not resting on F? G is at eight, nine. Wait, is F correct? F should be at height six. No, F should be at height four. Sorry. Yeah, F is at height 4, so that's correct. And then I have this final one here, my G. Should be at 5, 6, and it's at 6, 7. So G is not falling on F correctly. God, gosh darn it. <laughs> let's take our debugging function we used, and let's do that. So uh, let's start a queue with this is F. So this is in my tower already, and then let's drop G on it, which is 8, 9. So this one shifted up 1. So this shifted up to 8, 9. This should return uh, G shifted to 5, 6 even. It's doing something even weirder. It's saying it's moving it upwards. <laughs> My minus one is probably not very correct. Uh, but we have uh, something to work with here. We have something to work with. What is going on? I don't know what's going on, but I need to take a potty break. So I'm going to cut the stream here. See you later. Bye bye. Okay, break time's over. Let's uh, continue where we left off. Um, so we had a, another bug. My block at 8, 9, which is G, should drop to F. But instead of dropping, it was floating upward for some reason. So uh, let's take a look at what's going wrong here. Uh, so we are able to reproduce the bug uh, in this single function call, drop. So we have a problem with our drop brick function. Let's uh, print out some stuff. So let's print out the Z below. Mm, Z below. So we are expecting Z below to be four, right? We're expecting it to be four. And it's saying zero for some reason. That's even crazier. <laughs> Wait, one, 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 one. Why should it rest on? Oh, sorry, two, zero, two, two. I need to draw that out. <laughs> two, zero, two, two. What does that look like? Uh, let's take uh, black. So this is Y. This is X, forgive me for my horrible, horrible drawing skills. And then we have two, zero, zero, one, two, zero is this. And we have two, two. 
So it's like going down backwards, okay? And then we have one, 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 one. Of course, that should not rest on each other. They don't even. So the bug I'm seeing is not the the bug I was expecting. Those two pieces don't even. Huh? What is F? Zero one two one. Okay. Why am I looking at a? <laughs> why am I looking at a different block? Never mind. This this is not F. This is F. O one six two one six. O one six two one six. So O one. Two one. Okay, yeah, that's a horizontal. One 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 one. Yeah, that should be on there, right? One one is this one. O one is. O one is this one. Okay, so yeah, those should stop each other. Uh, that's somehow even worse. <laughs> But okay, we can work with this. This is a, at least a relevant problem. So why is this saying 6? That's because 6 is correct. So my height should be... Wait a second. If Okay, I am higher than 6. So yeah, that makes sense. If the thing below me is at height, height, height 6... Then I should be at height 7 if it blocks me. And for some reason I am at height 3. So that is not correct. But my height calculation of what's below me is correct. So Z below is correct. Let's see what happens if I try to lower myself by 5. Why am I lowering myself by 5? That's not correct, right? I should lower myself by... I am at I am at 8 and I want to be at 7 so I should lower myself by 1 which is me what, what what's the del offset I have to calculate here that's just it plain incorrect what I'm doing here so if the thing below me is at 6 how I should end up at 7 I should end up at 7. So the thing, yeah, I should just end up here. Lower myself to this coordinate. I don't need to do anything subtraction-wise. I just need to drop to that location. I don't care where, where I'm at right now. Oh, I do care. Because uh, my lowest point needs to drop to that location and my offsets or my distance between the two z's needs to be the same so yeah okay so that's a bit of a a problem of me not sorting the two points but okay if z1 is the smaller then drop z1 to z Z1 is the smallest one. Then drop C1 to Z. And how many did I go downwards? That's the difference between Z1 and Z. But uh, uh, downward is the only way, so that will always be a positive number. So yeah, I think that's correct. Famous last words. <laughs> and otherwise, I should drop the second point to Z. So this should become Z instead, and this should become the thing I was doing uh, back there, which is Z1 minus the difference in height between uh, the other point and uh, Z. That's how much it dropped. Uh, can I make that easier on my eyes? If Z1 is the smallest 
No, I don't think I can make it easier. What is the distance I drop? I don't see it in that left pair. No, yeah, no. I think this might be it. Uh, at least the example now is correct. So let's grab that. And let's see if my tests run. Yeah, my tests run. So I think that might have been the bug. So let's hard code that second test case. And that should... Oh, let's uh, first indent it a bit. And that should evaluate to this that looks appears to be correct yeah now let's make sure my formatting works there we go much better let's take a look at our uh, problem or our solution now what's the highest point i should have in the example it should be five and six for g five and six for g yeah i think we might be there So I think we might have solved building our tower. Now we need to disintegrate, right? <clears throat> I am going to visualize my tower. Uh, I think it might be a good idea. And to visualize, I'm going to use a graphing library called Plotly. I think it's Python. Where is Plotly originating from? Is it Python? Yeah, I think so. So. I'm not sure actually. Python R Julia. Yeah, so it comes from the Python world, uh, but there's a plotly.net a Nougat package, which is exactly the same. And it provides uh, some utility functions for F sharp. So it's very natural to use plotly and there's different uh, charting libraries, but plotly provides a 3D point chart. Uh, by default, so I don't need to do fancy stuff. Uh, I played around with it a bit before I got started today, and it's really easy. You just grab a nugget, import something, and call one line of code, and you have your chart. So let's do that. Let's import uh, the nugget package, which is plotly.net. Let's open it up. And let's draw a 3D chart, a 3D point chart uh, of our tower. So we have our tower. Let's now uh, generate points for it and plug that into the tower chart right here. So uh, what do the points look like? It's a list of tuples of threeples, which is uh, literally our uh, uh, brick list, except that the brick is like, uh, we need all the points in a brick, not just the two endpoints. Or at least that's how I would like to do it. So, where's all the points? Oh, we, we had it and, I, and then I threw it away because I had an easier <laughs> way to do max height. So I'm just going to do project again. Uh, I'm going to write the function again that it generates all points inside a brick. Or all points a brick consists of. So I'm going to call that points. Uh, just for visualization. Uh, so it's going to give us a coordinate list which is all the coordinates and I'm going to do the same thing we've been here before so I'm going to fly over it and yep so this gives me all points in a brick and we can use that to generate all points for all bricks in the tower here so it's tower collect which is a flat map uh, brick dot points. This gives me all the points in the tower, or at least it should. Yeah, that looks like it's giving me points, and then I can feed to the point 3D function. So let's see what our tower looks like in 3D. Uh, this is the example tower. Uh, that looks to be correct, right? We have one block of three below, and then two above, and then two above, one above, and then one of length two. Yeah, that looks correct. So let's run this on our input and take a look at our tower. I am glad with what I'm seeing here, except that I don't maybe want to see points. I want to see the bricks <laughs> instead of the points. Can I do that? 
what chart 3Ds do I have? Bubble cone line 3D. Oh. So what do I need? I need XYZ. Oh, it'll just generate one line graph. I need to like feed in multiple lines. That's what I want. Scatter, surface, cone. I could generate multiple 3D line graphs and put them together in a single chart. You can like combine charts into one single. Maybe that's something to do for afterward. This is good enough for now. We can render our towers and kind of see. You could make uh, the dots of one brick in one color. That could also work. But it helps with visualizing uh, the problem. And uh, I'm happy as is. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. Uh, the only thing I want to do is run on our input to make sure this works. Ooh, that was a bit heavier, but still doable. Let's render our tower. That is a dense tower. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That is one dense tower. It's a very... They all drop to, what? 170, so it's not too big of a tower. But it's one hell of a Yenga tower. Crazy. Okay, uh, we can have fun with visualizing uh, afterwards. But I think uh, we can calculate our tower and even for the input, so that's nice. Uh, so that's our uh, building phase. And now we need to do the disintegrating phase. And for that, we need to figure out, uh, or we need to build a graph. That's uh, how I was going to solve it. Still going to do that. I'm going to build a graph where my bricks are my nodes, and I have a directed graph that points to another brick if it... Uh, supports the other one or if it's supported by i don't know yet supports so the relationship will be supports a supports b that means that a is below b and uh, it carries it and then we just this try to disintegrate every brick and if we disintegrate the brick and there are nodes that have no supports anymore then uh, we're done. So I'm just gonna build a maybe a lookup table mapping uh, brick to the supports, or otherwise mapping a brick to whatever it supports. Let's map bricks to bricks they are supported by. So yeah, let's do that. I'm just gonna call it a graph, but it's not really a graph. Let's call it a support, <laughs> which is a map mapping bricks to lists of bricks. So we're going to fill this data structure. <coughs> I'm going to use the example again. Let's put my chart in comments. I don't want to see that every time I run my code. How do we create this supports? So this brick is supported by this list of bricks. So now we need to figure out for every brick, which bricks are directly below me. So we need to kind of project ourselves into the XY plane as we did for the, the other algorithm. Or, yeah, and we need to look one level below and then take a look at, okay, what brick is there? And our points thing, that will actually work really nicely for our max height at... Yeah, we can use several approaches, but I think I'm going to use my points to generate all points of a brick and then project again. So let's do it. Let's loop over all our bricks. So that's my tower. And looping over is just mapping. Yeah, let's map. And let's map into a tuple of bricks and whatevers and then make a lookup table of it and that should be my supports that should be my uh, graph so this is what i'm gonna do and now i need to fill this list with uh, uh i need to fill this empty list with the bricks that are supporting this brick so 
find bricks that uh, support uh, given this tower this brick. I'm gonna put it in the tower module. Today has been a module kind of day, so I'm gonna introduce the support. And that can be a list, right? It needs to return a list of yeah, it needs to turn a list of bricks. So let's create a new function which takes what were the arguments? I always forget. I I, I could use some uh resharp refactoring tools here. <laughs> tower and brick, okay. So it takes a tower and a brick and it returns a list of bricks. And that should generate my support graph. There we go. So that we broke the problem down yet again. Let's take a look at how you would implement our support structure. So that is taking all the XYs of my brick. Uh, brick project, which projects myself to the XY plane. And then for every XY coordinate I have in here, I need to find uh, whether or not something is one below me. So I need to know my lowest point. So my minimum Z, that's my top. Let's implement that quickly. So I have bottom and top. Now I know my top. So my top is brick, brick dot top. If I know my top, do I need to know my top? No, I need to know my bottom. <laughs> Why did I even introduce top? I need to know my bottom and then I know what's below. Uh, so I need to know what's below, which is top minus one. And at that location. Uh, so let's map every X, Y, Z or X, Y, sorry. Let's map every x, y to x, y top minus one. And if we have something in a tower at that location, that something is supporting. These are the support locations. And now let's iterate over the tower. And let's filter. And if B If any of the points of B so if there exists a point uh, that support locks one of those is the same. Uh so wait, 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 wait. I'm going doing too much. <laughs> so we have a tower and we have locations where we expect support to be. So now we filter our tower. And for every brick, we take a look at, okay, every point of that brick, does that intersect with one of these support locks or does one of those points correspond? So I'm just gonna do a... What's, called, what's the set operation called that I'm looking for? You have set union and set... What's the two set operations? Not union, but not difference, intersection. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm looking for the intersection of two lists. So I'm just going to use inter, uh, set logic here. So I'm going to put my break points into a set. And I'm going to intersect with uh, the support locations. So I'm going to build a set of those support locations as well. Oh, come on. I know my auto formatter will help, but uh, I like to see it before I make it happen. So yeah, if I do the intersection of that and this, and if that is non empty, then we're there. The intersection, if the intersection is not empty, we are there. That was a very <laughs> dense statement. So let's take a look at what we did here. Uh, we have our supporting locations, which is everything one Z coordinate below me. 
And then I say, okay, for every brick in the tower, generate all the points of that brick. And if it intersects with any one of those locations, which is not empty, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I think that works. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna do any fancy uh, getting rid of our arguments. So yeah, I think that works. Let's see if we can build supports. Uh, this was for the example. It was already pretty slow, actually. Okay, so I think we have our graph. Does that look correct? Let's take the example. Uh, or let's take our own rendered uh, graph. Let's take a look-see here. Uh, so we have something at level 1 that has no supports. Or the ground is support. Uh, let's get my supports back in my REPL. Uh, so we have something at ground level with no supports. That's this thing. That's correct. And then the thing at 2. There's two things at level 2 that all have one support. Which is the one at level 1. Does this one? Yeah. Do we have something with more than one support? Yes, we do. Something at level 3 is supported by two things at level 2. There's two of those things. So yeah, I think this is actually correct. Cool. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. We're getting somewhere. And now we can just shoot lasers and disintegrate a single block and uh, see uh, if we have something without supports. So I think we can safely say that uh, this is a special case in my algorithm because this one has no supports. So like the ground level blocks, uh, they don't count. <laughs> they don't need support. That's what I mean. So let's maybe, uh, we, we need to treat those as special cases or we need to uh, introduce the ground as a, oh, actually, would that magically work if I introduce a ground level brick? That's a bit hacky. That's a bit hacky. <laughs> yeah. So let's say uh, uh, we need to take a look at those special cases. But now we can shoot lasers at every individual brick in my tower. I have bricks, right? Yeah, I have bricks. So let's do bricks and map uh, every brick to a world where that brick does not exist anymore. So disintegr disintegrate brick from this support structure. And then we can uh, do other things with it. But let's introduce a disintegrate. I don't like the multiple, so I'm going to call it support. So support. Support disintegrate. So I'm going to introduce a function. If I can type at least. Disintegrate. That's a hard word. Disintegrate a brick from a support structure. And that returns an updated version of the support. Uh, yeah, cool. So support is a map. We know that, or at least this part of the code knows that. Uh, yeah, we're, we, we could clean it up as a complete abstract data type because now part of the code knows it's a map and other parts don't. That's not really super clean. So if I were to clean this up, I would extract a factory method to build supports, put it in a module. So nothing outside of this module knows that we're actually using a, a lookup table or a map. And we just have like functions on the support module that hide that fact that uh, that something is called uh, an abstract data type i think at least let's let's look that up let's make sure i'm not making stuff up adt abstract data type yeah that's the concept i'm thinking about but uh, let's first make it work and then let's maybe make it clean if i i feel like uh, working on this problem some more uh so yeah we are disintegrating a brick in a support structure which is doing something with support can i map uh, i have a map function on a map 
which takes a key and a value and a new and a new uh, type. So yeah, we, it's, it's a bit. Yeah, actually we can use this. So it's a key value and we can return a new value. So this is identity. Yes, this is the identity function, but we want to do something special. P is a list of bricks. And K is the whatever brick we're seeing. Uh, so this should leave my support structure untouched. It appears to be. And now we want to remove this brick out of all the bricks. So we can just do list except uh, a list containing only this brick we're feeding it. So now we are destroying uh, a brick from the support. So let's take a look at support. And let's take a look at a support where we disintegrate stuff. Yeah, it's too hard to see. <laughs> uh, okay, but we don't even care. Uh, and now we need to find for every disintegrated world. Let's maybe put the original brick in there as a tuple. So we have somewhat of an overview of what's happening. Yeah, so now we are destroying 18189. Oh, we need to not take a look at the original bricks, but we need to take a look at the bricks of the tower. So it's actually tower. <coughs> that was a silly mistake. Uh, yeah, so if we dis disintegrate this, we are losing support for level 2. This looks correct. So now we need to take a look at, hey, what has no support anymore? So it's the bricks and the... Wait, what do we actually have? Now we have like a list of supports, right? This is not a single support structure. It's a list of support structure where every entry in the list has one brick removed from the original. So now we need to filter uh, all the supports where we have like floating stuff because that's not okay. Or we do it the other way around. We figure out where we have no floating stuff and that's a safe disintegration. So let's do that. So that's a no floating bricks filter. I'm just gonna write that as another support module. So that takes a support structure and returns a pool, right? No? Oh yeah, I have my tuples in there. So it's the original brick and the support and we return whether or not the support has floating bricks. And I don't like the no in here, so let's make a has floating bricks function let's rename that function and let's filter it that way and the length of this list is what we're looking for uh, invalids or let's put a not in here and then this becomes the valids it's the valid disintegrations so now we need to figure out how we know that we have floating bricks in the support structure which is grab everything in this um, lookup table that has no supports i'm gonna put some comments here maps bricks to all bricks that support it directly so floating bricks is where we have Yeah, we don't even care about which it is. So the values is the list where the values um, map or there is a list that is empty. So this would work except for the floor. 
wait, what is this? I grab my values and I say... List exists, predicate, yes. List is empty, predicate. What's not working here? Let's let's do a predicate. What's what's wrong here? Oh no. Support is a uh, support map.values should give me these things, right? Brick lists. Oh, so that's a list of a list of bricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I should. I still don't know why this is not compiling. Oh, it's an I collection. God damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just gonna grab my lists in another way, like this. Probably there's more elegant ways to do that, but this works. So now I have my bricks of lists, and now I can do my list that is empty. So this would work, except that. Uh, for the ground level blocks, uh, the list is empty as well. So we need to filter out those. So I want to filter out here. Or I can filter out from the map, I guess. Can I use map.filter? Yeah. Uh, I want to keep everything that is not on the ground. So if my key, which is a brick, If this brick is on the floor, so then I need my minimum height. Uh, if that is one, I disregard myself. So if I, I if this is not one, I keep it. So now we need this min height brick thing. We have max height add and we have min height given a brick and that returns the minimum height. So that's almost the same as I do for all those other things. So I do a lot of sorting. <laughs> if I just sorted them when parsing, I wouldn't have had to do all this sorting in all my helper functions. So I need my Z coordinates. Let me grab the structure here. I only need the Z's. I only need the Z's, yeah. Sort them and find the minimum. And we have some unused variables here, but I don't care. Or uh, no, I don't care. So where were we? Well, what was I doing? I was doing the filtering of the first level. So yeah, I think maybe. Uh, maybe we have something like approaching the solution. Let's take a look. Length of this thing should be five. Oh, it is five. So maybe we have part one down. Let's take a look. Uh, let's run this on the input instead of the example. We ran our tests. Now we're doing a lot of heavy lifting. <laughs> oh no, we're doing a lot of heavy lifting. I should have sorted, I should have sorted uh, when parsing. But okay, it's not too bad. And it's right on the first try. That's amazing. Uh, let's take a quick look at part two. What you really need is a chain reaction. You'll need to figure out the best brick to disintegrate. For each brick, determine how many other bricks would fall if that brick were disintegrated. Ooh, that's interesting. I think we can do a lot of cool stuff now. I'm not even going to pause or make another video. I think uh, we can do a lot of cool stuff because we built it the way we built it. Uh, because we have a, what's it called? Drop function. And we can disintegrate. I know, I need, it, I need to be able to drop after I disintegrate. And one is a support type and the other is a tower type. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, it's still, it would still work, but it, it would be a lot heavier than it strictly needed to be. What if I took the sorting out of the functions and into the parsing? Then it wouldn't be too bad, would it? 
Okay, I'm, I'm doubting. I'm going to cut the stream here uh, just to make sure I don't lose three hours for part two because I think part one went rather smoothly except for maybe the not being the most performance uh, algorithm ever. But it was cool. Uh, so let's do a quick recap of part one uh, before I dive into the next part. Today we were uh, disintegrating bricks and dropping bricks onto a tower, Yenga style or Tetris style, 3D Tetris. Uh, I heavily used uh, modules and functions de uh, declared on modules to group stuff a bit so I can take the bottom of a brick, project a uh, brick to the XY plane, stuff like that. Uh, I do a lot of inefficient things which always sort. Uh, basically, my, my problems began when I did this. <laughs> this is just a tuple, but if I would have sorted those two uh, coordinates from smallest, uh, so that the smallest was always the first one, I didn't have to do all this sorting and I think that might be a bit of a performance hit. Or I don't think that, I know that. But anyway, uh, I have my modules. My tower is just a list of bricks. Uh, which is uh, the tower is a concept where every brick has fallen as far as it could go. Uh, we just do some easy parsing we, and then we wrote a drop function which drops all the bricks and the drop brick drops a single brick on the tower which uses all those helper functions. For example, take every point in the XY plane for this brick. Take uh, my all... What is this doing? Map to our tower maxi tower oh yeah it's taking a look at the maximum z coordinate of the tower up until now for every point in the xy and the highest point so that's where my brick would land and then we just make my brick go lower uh, that amount of uh, pixels so yeah that was pretty cool and for part two we did or we did some visualization with plotly which i kind of like for a uh, quick and dirty uh, data visualization stuff and then we built our graph using the supports lookup table, uh, which maps blocks to bricks that support that brick directly. And then we can just write our disintegrate logic, which just shoots out a brick out of that graph. And then we check whether or not, uh, or we check for every support where we disintegrate the brick, do we have like floating blocks? And that's a no go. And if we don't have floating blocks, we have a valid disintegration and we just count those up. So. Really cool puzzle. I am looking forward to part two, but that will be for another video. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. Bye bye.